Hi, I'm Captain Harold. I'm an engineer officer in the Army Reserves. And I'm Master Sergeant Brera, and also an engineer, and we are both with the MIT Army ROTC program. Today's video is intended to be part three of a three-part series. Video number one walks you through mission planning in reference to the 18-minute drill. Video number two walks you through the troop leading procedures from receipt of the warno all the way to the operator brief. And now this video, number three, is an example operator brief. I will play the PL. I will play the role of the platoon sergeant as well as all four squad leaders during action zone. Let's get started. The task organization for this mission, first squad, you will be the assault one. Second squad, you'll be the security squad. Third squad is going to be assault two. And fourth squad, the weapon squad, is going to be support throughout this operation. Let's take a look at the, the map and I'll orient you to the AO. This purple arrow denotes north, so at the top of your screen, you have the north, north side. At the north of our AO, we have grid line 9-8. The southern end of our AO is at grid line 9-5. To the east, we have Otter Creek, denoted by this blue line, vicinity grid line 852. And in the west, we have grid line 83. There are no considerable obstacles in this AO. There is one major avenue of approach, MSR Fort, which goes from north to south throughout the AO. And it's key to know that there are multiple smaller avenues of approach that branch off of either side that we may need to cross throughout this operation. Observation is about 30 to 150 meters in wooded areas, specifically denoted by green areas, and about 300 to 450 in open areas. So key to note that we will need to cross some open areas as well as linear danger areas throughout this operation. As far as cover and concealment are concerned, there's adequate concealment in wooded areas and excellent cover uh, with some older and thicker trees. Weather over the next 24 hours is expected to be favorable towards dismount operations. A couple of things I want to note, this is the, our current location at Patrol Base Alpha. This is the ORP that we'll head to on our way to the objective here at Objective Mamba. And this is Patrol Base Echo where we'll complete the operation. Two other key things to note on the map, we have objective BOA to the northwest, and then objective COBRA to the east of our objective. These are the two objectives associated with first platoon and third platoon within our own company. Taking a look at the enemy, uh, we expect this enemy to be a near peer threat. So we think that they're operating in teams of about three to five uh, dismounted operations throughout the AO. And we think that they're carrying similar type weapons to what we as U.S. forces carry. So you can expect to see M4 assault rifles as well as two M249 squad automatic weapons. The company mission, there is no change to the company mission at this point from what was given in the original order. It's still uh, to continue to destroy enemy forces to set conditions for offensive operations. And the commander's intent behind that is to reduce enemy capabilities and freedom of movement within the AO and destroy reinforcing elements within objective both. The end state, as dictated by the company commander, is that our AMA forces are degraded due to our initial operations. Now, our company, or sorry, our platoon mission is to conduct an ambush within the objective Mamba, located at grid Echo Golf 84129679. In order to disrupt enemy activity in the AO, no later than 1800. I say again. Our platoon mission conducts ambush vicinity objective Mamba in order to disrupt enemy activity in the AO no later than 1800. After the completion of the ambush, we also have a follow-on uh, task. On order, we'll move to patrol base Echo, located vicinity Echo Golf 846-966, and establish patrol base in order to prepare for follow-on operations. So that concludes paragraphs one and two. Next, we'll get into paragraph three and talk about the execution. Okay, so now we're gonna talk through the execution paragraph of this operation. We're going to talk about a big picture first and then narrow it down into all the way down to actions on the objective. So in terms of the timeline, I just wanna focus on the time is now 11.30 as we're briefing this off order. We need to initiate movement by 14.30. At 1600 is when we need to establish the ORP. By 1615, I wanna take the leader's recon element out on the leader's recon. By 1645, I expect to be placing the platoon at the ambush site. 
And by 1715, that's our no later than time for the ambush to be in place. We expect the enemy on target sometime between 1715 and 1800, at which point at 1800, regardless of whether or not the enemy has arrived, that's our exfil time. And at 1815, I expect to be moving from our ORP to patrol base echo. And by 1900, establish patrol base echo uh, and be prepared to conduct follow-on operations. So for each of the squads, we're gonna go through your task and purpose. For our first squad, you're the main effort. You're gonna be assaulting the enemy in the engagement area. The purpose is to disrupt enemy activity in AO Panther. Second squad, your task is to seize is the security of the ambush engagement area. And the purpose is to deny enemy freedom of movement. Third squad, your task is to assault, similar to first squad, Assault the enemy in the engagement area, and the purpose is disrupt enemy activity in AO Panther. And then finally, weapon squad. Your task is to support by fire with a purpose of denying enemy freedom of movement on the engagement area. So some of the things that have been going on in the background while I've been giving this brief, imagine that we're in the middle of a patrol base. Your team leaders, while you're receiving, while your squad leaders are receiving this brief, are off doing the priorities of work within the patrol base. So there's no change to what's been previously published. Uh, in prior fragos uh, to priorities of work. Also, the priority of rehearsals is unchanged. Uh, or sorry, the priority of PCCs is unchanged. The priority of rehearsals, I want to specifically focus on rehearsing ambush activities at the squad level. So specific to your role, whether you're assault, security, uh, or support by fire. Um, the second rehearsal is reacting to contact in the event that we take contact on our way to the objective. And finally, the third one is rehearsal of breaking contact, if we need to break contact at any point throughout this mission. The order of movement once we begin the operation, from the patrol base alpha, where we're currently located, to the ORP, the order of movement will be second squad, first squad, followed by third squad. The weapon squad, alpha and bravo team, will be located in between first and second, and then in between first and third, so that we're spacing out those weapon systems. Then once we are complete with the ambush and we're moving from the ORP to patrol base echo, we're gonna switch things up as a means to let, lessen the burden on second squad in terms of having to do the route planning. So move, order of movement from patrol, ORP to patrol base echo will be third squad, first squad, second squad. Again, weapon squad will be dispersed in between those two squads. Finally, I wanna delineate special teams for this operation. Aim litter, primary is going to be third squad, alternate first squad. EPW, primary is first squad, and alternate is third squad. And then demo team, similar to Aim litter, the primary is going to be third squad, followed by first squad. I'll be followed by the, uh, our second squad leader to talk us through the scheme of maneuver and the exact route plan. I'd like to orient you to the map to get us started here. So this operation will be done in four phases. Uh, phase one is the movement and the occupation of the ORP. Phase two is leaders recon and movement to the assault position. Phase three is actions on the objective. Phase four is movement to follow on location or patrol base echo. So starting off, we're gonna start at patrol base alpha, which is at Echo Golf 816-976. And we're gonna move and a platoon column squad wedge formation using the traveling formation or the traveling movement technique. We're going to move 800 meters at 183 degrees. Once we get to the ORP, we're going to conduct our leader's recon and then uh, movement to the assault position. The ORP is located at Echo Golf 841-969. And we're gonna to move to Objective Mamba at Echo Golf 841-967 in a platoon column squad wedge formation using the traveling tech movement technique. We're gonna move 183 degrees at 150 meters. And once we are at Objective Mamba, we will conduct our leader's recon. Once we are complete with, with the uh, objective, 
We will go back to the ORP, which is located at Echo Golf 841-969, and we'll move to Patrol Base Echo at Echo Golf 846-966 using the platoon column squad wedge formation and traveling movement technique. We'll move at 113 degrees at 600 meters. That covers the majority of paragraph three, but we haven't made it to the most important part yet. Next up is actions on the objective. We're now gonna go through actions on the objective, specifically focusing on this individual terrain model that depicts everything from the ORP all the way to the objective and back. Arguably, this section is the most important part of your brief as a platoon leader. So make sure that you take the time to specifically focus on going through the individual actions that each of your subordinates will execute during this phase. To orient you to the terrain model, the, to our north, we have the 9-7 grid line. To our west, the 8-4 grid line. Over here in the east, MSR Fort runs north to south. And on the southern edge, we have an unimproved trail that includes our objective and the engagement area. Also, just south of the 9-7 grid line, we have an unimproved route, in addition to this large open area here that we're gonna have to cross while moving from the ORP to the objective. Everything that you see in green represents vegetation that would offer cover and concealment for us as we move to the objective and then occupy the objective. So at this point, in blue, you can see the platoon leader and the RTO. In green, this is the platoon sergeant. And in silver, these represents each of the individual four squad leaders. Now we're going to move from the ORP to the objective and conduct the leader's recon. The platoon leader is going to give a gatwa as they're leaving to the platoon sergeant that will sound something like, I am going to pinpoint the objective location. Others I'm taking with me include the four squad leaders, the RTO, and the entirety of second squad for a total of about 13 personnel. The time is currently 16.15. I'll be back no later than 16.45. If I don't return, I want you as the platoon sergeant to conduct a radio check with my element. And if you can't initiate comms, then send a runner team to come find us. Actions on contact for you will be to retrograde your element from the ORP back to the last rally point that we established on our way to the ORP, and, and this element will link up with you later. If my element takes contact, we are going to return to the ORP, link back up with the rest of the platoon, and then retrograde from there and receive follow-on orders from the company CP. Now that the leader's recon team has crossed the danger area and made it to the objective location, we're now going to set up each of the security locations on both left and right side security. As the platoon leader, I'm gonna go with second squad leader, specifically focusing on the security position on the eastern side, because this is where I see the largest point of friction. We have an MSR running north-south, as well as our objective uh, road, so that this security position needs to be able to look in multiple different directions. After confirming this is a solid security location, I'm going to move over to the other security location and verify that we have security on both sides of the objective. After I'm confident the security is established, I'll move back uh, to the release point where the remainder of the leader's recon is gathered. And I'm now gonna focus on four squad leader, and we're gonna set up the support line. Ideally, we wanna put the support line on the western side, because we expect the enemy to travel north on MSR Fort, and then travel east to west across the engagement area. Once we get to the support, uh, to the support line, I'm specifically gonna be focused on identifying terrain features that we can use as target reference points to delineate left and right limits for each of the uh, weapon systems. Next, I'll move over to the assault line to link up with first and third squad leader. 
and determine where each of their individual squad fighting positions would go. At this point, I'm concerned with splitting the engagement area in half using a direct fire control measure to verify that each squad knows what their respective left and right limits are. We're also going to agree on a trigger point, at which point the enemy, when they cross that trigger point, that will be the trigger for me as the platoon leader to initiate the ambush. Now that we've established all of uh, the actions during the leader's recon, I'm now going to leave second squad leader here with Alpha Team and Bravo Team, and the remainder of the leader's recon will return back to the ORP to link up with the rest of the platoon. Now that we've conducted the link up with the rest of the platoon, all elements are gonna move back to the release point, and I'm now gonna use these icons to denote which squad is in which position. The order of movement from the ORP to the release point is going to be first squad, followed by weapons squad, followed by second squad. Once we reach the release point, we're now going to infill the objective as backwards. So specifically security, followed by support, followed by assault. So security is already in place, so support is next. Four squad, I'm looking at you. What are you guys doing as far as support? So once we reach the release point, we will, I'm gonna take my squad uh, to the support firing line, and we're gonna move, and once we set up, once we have our first weapon system set up on a tripod, we'll give you a call and they know that we're set. All right, now the support is in position, we need to occupy the assault line. First and third squad, what are your actions? So both of our squads are gonna move first squad first and then third squad next. Uh, we're gonna move to the assault line. Both of us will emplace our claymores. We'll place the claymores uh, from the assault line and once the claymores are in place, we will move back to the assault line and then give you the call and tell you that we're ready. Okay, perfect. So once we have the claymores in place, we're now going to wait in position until the enemy crosses the engagement area. Once the enemy reaches the target point, we will initiate the ambush using our pace plan. Primary initiation method is going to be using each of the two claymores from first and third squad. I, as the platoon leader, will be located right here behind first squad, and I'll personally give the order to initiate the claymore. The alternate means is gonna be a whistle by me and our contingency plan will be, I will open fire using my M4. I want to avoid fourth squad having to open fire uh, to initiate the ambush because they have open bolt weapon systems and I don't wanna use a weapon system that's prone to jam. Now that we've initiated contact with the enemy, first and third squad, what are your actions? So once we've initiated contact, we will fire for approximately 60 seconds and we'll receive the call from you to cease fire. Once we cease fire, both squads are going to get up and move through the engagement area uh, to the LOA, or limit of advance. Uh, we'll call it out and then wait for further guidance from you. All right, now that you've reached the LOA, my primary concern as a platoon leader is going to be with establishing security and then setting up our special teams. So specifically, the first special team that I'm gonna call is gonna be the EPW, so third squad. I'm looking at you. Uh, what are your actions when I call the EPW team? So once the EPW team is called, it's gonna be third squad alpha team. Uh, they're gonna to move to the engagement area. Uh, they're gonna make sure that uh, no enemy personnel uh, either are they're either alive or dead, and then they're taking those uh, prisoners of war. Okay, once the EPW team is complete, the next team, the next special team I'll call for is aid and litter. So up until this point, we may have done maybe self-aid, buddy aid. Now it's time to call for the aid and litter teams to come uh, have a platoon concerted effort to evacuate casualties. So primary team for that's going to be first squad. First squad, what are your actions? So, so once we get called up, we'll have uh, third squad alpha team is going to move up, uh, assess any casualties as needed. We are going to use Bravo team and Alpha team to move any casualties to the platoon sergeant's position, uh, who is located with uh, Fort Squad at the support by fire position. Okay, now that we're done with Aiden Litter, the next team up is going to be Demo. This is going to be relatively quick. 
third squad, you're up for them. So third squad Bravo team is our demo team. Uh, once they get called up, it will move to the engagement area, at which point most of the items uh, that the enemy has that we don't want them to use anymore will be consolidated in the center somewhere, uh, and they will place their charge. Once they are ready to uh, detonate the, uh, the charge, then we'll give you the call. All right, perfect. Well, now I'm gonna take a look back at the terrain model uh, and talk about how we're gonna exfil the objective. So now we need to get ass out. So first, it's gonna be uh, the assault elements, followed by the support, or sorry, the support elements, and then the security elements. So in this case, first and third squad move first through the release point back to the ORP, second squad, or sorry, the support squad, then moves back to the ORP, followed by uh, our security. Now that we've made it back to the ORP, there's a couple final points uh, that I want to point out before. Uh, once we move to the objective, or excuse me, once we move to patrol base Echo as the final step, a couple points that I want to make. Number one, we kind of skipped over actions on the uh, open danger area. That's a key thing that we need to brief during rehearsals in order to make sure that everyone is confident crossing that area before reaching the objective. Second, our exfil plan. That's another platoon TTP, the red, white, and blue plan. Another thing we need to execute during rehearsals to make sure that everyone is confident with the order in which we're going to exit the objective and also things as simple as when are we moving from tripod to bipod in order to get the support team and the support element off of the objective. So the last thing I want to discuss is just a couple key points. The RTO, we want to make sure that we have no more than 10 minutes on the objective. So RTO, your task is going to be to keep time on your watch. And starting at five minutes every minute, I want you to call out the time so that the entire platoon can hear you. And that's our, that's our trigger to hurry up and speed things up so that we can get off the objective more quickly. Also, as a final measure of talking about paragraph three, some of the coordinating instructions I want to cover uh, is PIR and FFIR. Specifically, PIR that we're concerned about on the objective is understanding if we can get any intel from the enemy as far as locations of any enemy caches. And the most important FFIR for friendly forces is understanding that when we have troops in contact, that information needs to make it to higher headquarters as quickly as possible. So next, we'll move from the ORP all the way to patrol base Echo, and we'll cover paragraphs four and five in the next video. So now we'll talk about the sustainment paragraphs of the operations order. Class one, Mike, 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 or MRE, MRE, MRE. Uh, with class one, class five, and class eight, we'll have resupply at patrol base Echo. Class eight, we will have a CLS bag, BS-17 panels, and a couple of polis litters. As we're rolling through the operation, starting from the patrol base alpha, to our objective, we will have a rolling CCP. So if anything happens throughout that route, uh, we will call in a nine line and do it on MSR port. When we get reach the objective, uh, CCP will be at my location, which I will be located with the uh, weapons squad leader at the support firing line. For paragraph five, command and signal, the company CP is gonna be located at Echo Golf, 84189696. The succession of command for this operation is going to be myself, followed by the platoon sergeant, the weapons squad leader as a senior squad leader, and then first squad, second squad, and third squad. The challenge and password is going to be kill and incline. The running password will be gain, and the number combination is nine. In terms of our pace plan for communications, primary is going to be FM. Alternate is hand and arm signals. Contingency is a runner. And then finally, our emergency is going to be a face to face communication. That concludes the operator brief. At this point, what are your questions? <laughs>